by far my favorite fish to catch is undoubtedly a sea trout um, yeah I think you'd it would take a lot to sway me uh, away from from a sea trout um, and my favorite way of catching a sea trout would definitely be on the surface if if at all possible same if I'm trout fishing grayling fishing or, or whatever really uh, just that take on the surface I think just adds uh, an extra element to the fish and to the fishing so if at all possible I like to catch them on the surface um, now the, the the surface flies for sea trout are quite specialized and quite specific um, they yeah you have absolutely fantastic patterns uh, well known patterns such as the jambo for example um, which which obviously work extremely well um, this is my own little pattern uh, which has served me really well uh, over the last few seasons it's a very lightweight pattern uh, but actually in addition to being lightweight which obviously makes it easier to, to, to cast it fishes uh, one of the main things about sea, uh, about surface is, is that you want them to fish very much in rather than on the surface film so you actually want them to make to be very easy to intercept from a sea trout's perspective and this pattern in, in you know in particular is very easy for the fish to, to intercept it's not you know like a cork on the surface which uh, you know can, can bounce away when the fish is trying to intercept them um, this actually sits very much in the surface film as and is anchored in that surface film so I tend to fish, uh, I, I don't fish trebles, uh, I don't see the need for trebles anymore uh, so this is purely built uh, around very much a, a tandem setup um, the front hook is a wide gape medium shank hook uh, I don't particularly want to, you can use a long shank uh, especially if you want to create a, a much larger or longer pattern um, but I find the mid shank uh, it is perfect for the job uh, and for this this is actually a partridge attitude extra salt uh, in number four the, now I need a, a trailing hook and again I don't use trebles um, I'm using a Nordic uh, tube fly single hook you can either use a number six or a number eight I think this is a number six and this is actually connected this is a, a piece of shrink tubing the mount has already been created basically uh, but it's uh, I think it's three millimeter uh, black shrink tubing it then has some braid in the core um, and the, the, the shrink tube over it's a very easy pro process but the beauty of this is that essentially the mount moves it's not basically too soft that it catches back onto the front hook but also not too rigid that it's going to lever the hook hold so it's the best of both worlds really um, this braid is something like 40 pounds uh, so doubled so it's about 80 pounds so the mount is also very very strong uh, so you're not going to lose any fish but this is the mount already done basically all the you know certainly the, the shrink tubing process already done it's literally just passing the braid through the eye of the hook passing the shrink tubing over passing a lighter very quickly under make sure you don't expose the tubing to the lighter for too long because otherwise it melts the braid and that could end in disaster because essentially if a, you know, a, a very small pull on the trailing hook will just break the break the mountain you, you lose the fish um, so that's that's the whole process done there I'm gonna be using uh, Vivas uh, thread in black and 10 O. so it's gonna start off by catching that on the front hook like so snip off the excess create a little bed of thread before we bring up the mount like that just measure the trailing hook to where you want it to be hold it upright so the beauty of this as well you'll always have one hook pointing up one hook pointing down so you've got the best of both worlds from a fish hooking perspective when you're tying this in try and leave around two to three millimeters of the tubing you actually tie in and over that tubing like so like that you just at this point just make sure that the, the hook is running straight down the center of the, 
the front hook, which it is, like this, and then pass these two tag ends of the braid in through the eye of the front hook. What we do then is take that in and underneath, like so, and just go down the hook. And that's going to create a really, really strong mount. And just cut off the excess of the braid. Like that. At this point too, I usually just put a small dab of super glue. And what that does is it bonds the thread and the braid together. And that creates a really solid mount which is going absolutely nowhere like so just try and catch down the edge of that shrink tubing so you've got a a more streamlined body like so that's perfect and then for the body we're using some holographic silver flat braid Snip a small length of that. There's still some super glue down there as well that we just put on the, the braid and the thread, so that's just going to help on the body just to secure this braid because we're not going to rib over it. Because it's a multi fibered braid, I'm not going to bother actually ribbing over. So I'll just take this down the body, touching turns. Don't worry about it being too pretty and neat just close that off a few turns and just snip the excess okay so if you're tying some other patterns for example a tandem pattern you would actually just take that braid all the way down put a wing on head hackle and that's a you know that's a, a perfectly good fly uh, for sea trout to be fishing like a sunken sunken pattern but obviously we're tying a, a surface lower pattern here so we, we need a wing at this point um, you don't really want a, a soft wing because it will wrap too much uh, so I'm actually you can use a uh, squirrel uh, squirrel uh, dyed black for some of the s smaller patterns but this is a reasonably long pattern so I'm actually using bucktail instead um, let's take a, a decent chunk of bucktail and just cut it so that it's or, or tied up to the you know um, married up to the body that it's protruding just past that trailing hook that looks good there just tie that in Make sure it doesn't roll too much. We want it stacked on top of the flight, like so. And then snip off the ends. A bit of flash over. It's going to use some pearl crystal hair. Like four or five fibers is ample. Take it underneath your thread. Offer it up. And just rest it on top. There's one short little fibre, it's going to pull that out no, it doesn't matter, leave it in there like so again just marry it up so it ends roughly where the tips end snip a couple so they actually finish at different intervals that looks good okay What we're going to do now is we're going to bring up the uh, deer hair. So we're just going to spin some black deer hair in the head. We don't need too much again. We're not adding too much bulk. But what is important, especially in nighttime fishing for sea trap, is profile and silhouettes. I'm a big believer in that. Um, and you don't need bulk to it to achieve that really. Um, so deer hair. Great for this. And what we're going to do is we're going to marry this up. Just going to get the tips riding about halfway between the end of the first hook and the start of the trailing hook. So there is perfect. 
it's going to take one loose turn two loose turns and then spin like so I'm just going to take my thread down through those fibers again it's not really a too much of a we don't want too much buoyancy from this because we're actually going to use foam we're just going to take this down through the deer hair and use it from a bulk perspective uh, sorry a, a profile perspective rather than a, a buoyancy or a bulk perspective and that's good I'm just going to take the thread through the middle of this deer hair just pop it out towards the eye like so and now just push all of this deer hair back so it's kind of stack it because we need a bit of a, a clear space at the head so that's perfect just cleared that back so now we have a good clear tying area here okay that's all we need to do now is we need to clip the 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 top of the fly and the bottom of the fly what we're doing is leave leaving the edges and the edges is essentially what we want from a profile perspective so you can clip the top and the bottom as close as you want because essentially we're just taking bulk out at this stage so we don't need we don't need this bulk on the top don't worry about again just being too neat with any of this because that rugged profile works really well which is a good job with my tying uh, same on the bottom and actually do the bottom really snip the bottom really close because that will help the fly swim in rather than on the water surface and the same and here just to expose that silver body you actually just take the scissors in just where the, the silver body exists and just snip really close to that snip again just down underneath just leaving the edges like so so we've got a, a really um, clean profile underneath and above now just leaving the sides in place what we then do with the sides is we want to slowly taper into the sides so actually some of these long fibers along the side you just snip into them just so it tapers back into into the rest of the body and the rest of the wing like so try and measure them up so both sides are around the same length like so okay so that's the pattern nearly finished last touch finishing touch is the foam uh, I would recommend foam between four and six millimeters thick black white whatever you really fancy I use black I tend to cut a little wing at the back you don't have to just and then just marry it up so this this section is protruding down the back and then there's a longer length out the front doesn't really matter about how long is at the front at this stage because we're actually going to snip that anyway. So what you do is just marry it up that it's resting on top, that flat section which we've cut into the deer hair. It's resting on top. Brush the deer hair back so we're not going to trap in too much. You probably trap a couple of fibres, that's okay. We're not going to trap too much when we attach the foam. Just take a few really good turns. You'll see now how that's sitting on top which is really nice really nice you can adjust it slightly I'm really happy with that so after you've done that you know it's secure now fold this foam back the front foam and tie in front of it that'll help kick that front section up a little bit now a bit of a fiddly part is just finishing the fly off with a whip finish because sometimes the foam just kicks the, the whip finish off. One, two, three. Don't worry about it too much. We're just going to super glue that. And that's the fly finished. Now what we do is, just with um, some straight edge uh, scissors, now we just cut the front paddle 
to where we want it. Don't do it with curved, obviously, because you'll have a curved section. That looks good. And that's the fly done. You can see the interception from the bottom is really clean, as is the interception at the back. Okay, so there's no bulk here. If a fish intercepts here, there's no bulk. If a fish intercepts here, there's no bulk. You've got a really clear path of interception basically to both hook points but also if you look at where the, the, the buoyancy has been stored or stacked we've stacked the buoyancy up high what that's going to do is allow this section all of the all of this will ride below the water surface where this will actually ride above the water surface so this is going to give you your wake you're going to get a nice kind of um, profile silhouette cast from uh, the deer hair that's sticking out the side. You can have a, a degree of buoyancy from the deer hair as well, of course, uh, but the, the, the foam is what's going to stack the, uh, the buoyancy. This vein sticking slightly upwards will also help invert the, the fly slightly, again helping this hook ride subsurface and just give you a better interception from the fish, uh, fish's uh, perspective. And again, when the fish takes, this actually moves with the fish. Whichever direction the fish goes, the hook stays with it. So actually, it's a really good fish hooker, um, and you get a really good, uh, hook, you know, land, landing ratio with this fly. Um, so give that fly a go. Again, it's a fly that's uh, worked really well for me over over the last few seasons. It's relatively easy to tie, as most of my flies are, uh, but it has been fine tuned over quite a few seasons. Um, so. It yeah, you know, it is worth carrying in in your in your fly box, uh, and again, to me, catching them on the surface is is the best way, if if at all possible. Anyway, hope you enjoy that, uh, and hope the fly brings you luck in the future. Tight lines.